What is going on, Patriots Nation? This is Jason Cole back with the Patriots Drive Podcast. We got one of the biggest games coming up for the Patriots of the season. And yeah, we're talking about against the New York Giants, a two and eight team versus a three and eight team. But we're going to be talking about who's going to be starting um, at quarterback. Are they going to stick with Mac? Are they going to go with Zappy or maybe Will Greer? What should they do? Because this could be a huge spot for placing in the 2024 NFL draft order. So um, without further ado, let's get right into the video. Okay, well, without further ado, let's Cole, let's just get right into it. Let's ask a question. There's been rumors of a quarterback switch. The Patriots have been noncommittal on the uh, quarterback switch from the coaching side, both Bill O'Brien and Bill Belichick. So who do you think is going to start this week for the Patriots? There's only a couple of games left. We're coming off of a bye. Do they make a quarterback switch or do they stick with Mac Jones? I think there's no better time to make a quarterback switch if you're going to make one than after what just happened when you pulled Mac Jones. I don't see how it's a good spot to put him back in, but I think he's going to be the guy who ends up back in. Um, it just, it this whole situation just doesn't make a lot of sense to me. First off, you pull Mac Jones. I get it. He he made some awful throws that game. Like he, he deserved to not have a lot of confidence from the coaching staff to go win it in the two minute drive, but he prepared all week. He played the full game against this defense. You're going to pull Zappy cold off the bench and somebody who hasn't played in game and done a two minute drill live in who knows how many years. Like I, I just Zappy hasn't even played an NFL game since last year, unless you count preseason. Um, so I don't know. I, I didn't love that move. It shows a complete lack of confidence in Mac Jones. And then you go into the bye week and you're non-committal on anything where beforehand you were like, yeah, Mac's a starter. So not now you're keeping everything up in the air. Uh, but the starting quarterback usually uh, holds a press conference on Wednesday and Mac is doing that tomorrow. So that kind of hints to me that Mac's going to be the guy still. So if Ma if Mac is still going to be the guy, why are we jumping through all these hoops and putting it up in the air and keeping a conversation about who's going to start this week? Why don't you just name Mac Jones and have it be that? I just I think it should be Mac, not because I have confidence in him winning football games necessarily, but worst case scenario. Mac continues to struggle. You keep losing games. You get a top three pick and you take your replacement quarterback. Best case scenario, Mac Jones shows a little life and maybe enough life to up his draft. Uh, maybe you can trade him to a different team and up his uh, value. And then you can get a draft pick for him. And maybe you still end up with a top five, top six pick and can trade up and get a guy or something like that. So I, I think Mac looking more like himself can only be positive as far as that goes. Uh, I just, I don't see what putting Bailey Zappi or Will Greer in there does, unless you're just completely done with Mac. You think there's no way he can up his value to a different team. And in that case, you're just keeping them. At, you could just throw them on the bench as a third string quarterback and put in Will Greer and Zappi and see what they can do. I don't, I don't think anything's going to be different. I think it could be even worse, which maybe you might argue is better because your draft pick would be better. But overall, I just, I think they've, they just handled this so poorly from this whole season, but really the whole time that we've had Mac Jones, he's just, he hasn't been handled like a first round quarterback should. They haven't set him up to succeed and, this is where we're at, and it's uh, it's an unfortunate spot to be in. Yeah, Mac Jones could be one of the most mismanaged quarterbacks in the recent years. I mean, you look at Zach Wilson. Yeah, I mean they didn't really give him opportunities, but he's just he's just bad. I think, and and I'm a Zach Wilson supporter. He's just bad. I mean, then you look at Justin Herbert. They haven't really done much with him. That team is just bad. But Mac Jones has the yips. They said that they were sold a smart, effective game managing quarterback, and instead they're getting a guy that makes a lot of mistakes out there and doesn't do the smart thing that often. He also said there's a lot of comp there's not a lot of confidence in Mac Jones right now inside the building. Now, I get all those things. If I was Mac Jones, I'd be scared to death too, because there's not a dude up there that could block my 80 year old grandma in a wheelchair. And so you got, you know, free runners coming at you and he's trying to get rid of the ball. You guys, you got guys that can't create separation consistently. So I think some of those things, if true, are on Bill Belichick and this you know team. Like this is not all on Mac Jones. Now, 
I'm kind of in the boat. Whoever gives us the best chance of getting a top three pick is who should play. And that kind of sucks because I still want Mac Jones to, you know, be thrown to Demario Douglas. I want some guys like that that we know are going to be here next year to develop. But we need to get a top three pick, whether that's Caleb Williams, Drake May, or even Marvin Harrison Jr. If we get the third overall pick and take Marvin Harrison Jr., and then keep Mac Jones or go sign like a veteran like Kirk Cousins Daniels or maybe early second. Yeah. Or you get, you know, maybe some people are saying Penix or Bo Nix or Jane Daniels will be there in the second. If that happens, sign me up. I, I don't know if I believe that because all three of those guys are playing out of their heads. But if that can be a possibility or if you can trade for Kyler Murray, say, you know, Arizona gets the number one overall pick. They're like, let's move on. He's too expensive. I would not be opposed to taking Kyler Murray. I mean, I, I would hope that it wouldn't be a top three overall pick that we'd have to trade. I don't think it would coming off an injury in his contract. But if we could get Kyler Murray for a second round pick with the way he's played in just two games, I would take him and, and pair him with Marvin Harrison Jr. So I'm just at the point where I don't want to win three or four of these last games and get the eighth, ninth, tenth overall pick because I just I, this team is so far away. They still need more. They need a receiver. They need, you know, a quarterback. They really do and stuff. So I don't know if they make the switch either because it's obviously not working with Mac Jones. So if they're if the goal is to try to win games, then they probably would have made this switch earlier. And I still don't even think Bailey's happy he gives us a chance to win games. We saw when he came in throwing the ball in the dirt. You know, I I, I don't get the whole I can't say what I want to say thing. Like if it is about the refs. Everyone talks about the refs. He probably just doesn't want to get fined because he doesn't make enough money. Anyways, I just, I, I hate the uh, the chance of New England going in there and being like, hey, let's go win three of these last couple games. I just, we don't need that. We, we, we kind of did that the last couple years and we got, you know, decent picks. We struck gold on Christian Gonzalez, but we need a top three pick and a, a game changing prospect in the NFL draft. And I just, Whatever's going to give you an opportunity to get that, you got to roll out these last couple weeks. This team has a severe lack of star power. You go look at the Eagles Chiefs game last night, mostly the Eagles in, in that side, but Jalen Hurts, Jalen Carter, uh, AJ Brown, Devontae Smith, um, Jason Kelsey, I would say, is um, even in, in that realm. Uh, they just they have so many talented pieces on the D line, on the offense, on the O line. Like, they just have star power. Who on the Patriots screams superstar to you? Anybody? Maybe Matt Judon? Maybe Christian Gonzalez? Christian maybe Gonzalez like if he would have stayed healthy. It's yeah, just, I mean, you have such little talent. When a rookie you just drafted is considered one of your best players, that's great. Like that you drafted a good rookie, but that doesn't make your whole roster that impressive. It's just you need. This team needs a star player. They really need a franchise quarterback. So if you can get one in the top three, that'd be awesome. But like you said, if Marvin Harrison Jr. is there and the two quarterbacks are off the board and he's falling to your lap, take him. One of those stud left tackles of Joe Alt sitting there at five or six or whatever, if that's where you drop to, take him. Just this team needs talent. They need so much. I would prefer they start with quarterback and I would prefer they get one of those top two guys that we've touched on. But that's my concern too. Getting getting this team to like the eight ten range and picks if they squeak out a few wins here doesn't do you any good for the future. And at this point, my concern is the future. And Bill Belichick, if he's still around next year and he's still GM, and we get the eighth to tenth pick, there's a zero percent chance that he goes and trades up for a top two quarterback. You know that he never will do that. So um, you really just gotta at this point. I'm focused on the future. I want to see some of the young guys play well. I want to see players on this team play well what's best is to end up losing these games and get a higher draft pick uh, and then hopefully we can get our franchise quarterback maybe we can end up trading belichick for a first round pick or something and get a tackle or a wide receiver and, and really start rebuilding this thing but uh, yeah i just i think max gonna be the guy I, I just i don't know why they're playing these head games and if it is somebody else then okay then we know they're moving on from mac jones i have no problem with that They've screwed him up so much that I don't think there's any coming back, um, any, any coming back from here. But that's kind of that's kind of my stance on it all. Real quick, guys, we'd like to thank today's sponsor, Underdog Fantasy. With Underdog's NFL Pick'em, they make it super easy to win big on any given night. 
They have individual player props or daily fantasy and are legal in 41 of the 50 states. Right now, they are doubling your first deposit up to $100 when you use code PATSDRIVE or use the link in the description. All you have to do is select higher or lower and submit your wager for as low as $1 to win anywhere from 3 times to 20 times your money. You can also compete against thousands in underdog fantasies, daily fantasy tournaments ranging anywhere from football to baseball to basketball. Whatever sport it is, there's a tournament for you. Now with Underdog's Pick'em Insurance, you can still win money even if one of your picks does not hit. So head over to underdogfantasy.com or download the Underdog app. Make sure to use code PATSDRIVE or use the link in our description to get started today. Yeah, and you're you're talking about a quarterback in Mac Jones that is no, I mean, I think me and you were very defensive of Mac Jones. Like we were like, hey, this is going to be his year. New England still didn't go out and get him that number one receiver like we thought about. And I don't think Bill O'Brien has really helped like we thought we would. But then again, he just doesn't have the offensive personnel to help him out. Like he, they, they really don't. So Mac Jones is sitting at just nothing. It, it's, it's bad. I mean, your most explosive, consistent receiver is Demario Douglas as of right now because Kendrick Bourne is out. And, you know, he's not, he was a six round pick and I think he's going to be really good. But, you know, he's, obviously not there yet he's not superstar like you just said he's not the superstar talent so but you're looking at mac jones he's dead set or 50 50 uh, touchdowns and interceptions he's got 10 touchdowns 10 interceptions um and just north of 2000 yards he has 2031 yards so i mean no one's sitting here talking uh, you know defending mac like i i'm i'm just as disappointed in him as everyone else but i just he it's not like he's Zach Wilson on the Jets with the one of the most talented rosters in the NFL and they are losing games. Like he has probably a to- a bottom two, maybe bottom three. Like you think of the Panthers, I would say even the Cardinals have more just because Kyler Murray, like they, they have more talent. Um, the Jet the Giants, maybe, but they still have Saquon Barkley, like there's still like superstars on some of these other teams that you talk about, and there's none on the Patriots. I mean, the Bears probably don't have that talent. Um, the Patriots and the Panthers, like those are guys that you just think of like, who's their superstar superstar? There's really not one. You know, there's a fringe superstar and, you know, Matt Judon or um, just maybe DJ Moore, Justin Fields, or, you know, in Carolina, um, you know, you got like Brian uh, Burns or something like there's fringe superstars, but there's not like a true incredible you know best player on the team and stuff so he has been given very minimal opportunities to succeed that's why i'm very excited that we're probably going to have a top three pick and a ton of cap space but also very nervous because we have a lot of work to do and I don't know if that's possible in one off season. And I don't know if that's possible with who's going to be running it and who's going to be taking the shots. And for us to be even competitive next year, you got to hit on a lot of your draft picks, especially in the early rounds. Cause those guys are probably going to be, you know, starting right away. You think of, you're going to have the number one, two or three overall pick, maybe four or five. And then you're going to end up having, you know, somewhere in the 33 to 38 pick range too. So a very high second round pick also. And you got to hit on those guys. Cause those guys got to come in and they, they got to be immediate impact players. It's not like you're drafting at 28, 29. Cause you're in the AFC championship game and then back at 60 something. And you know, you're taking best player available. No, you got to take guys that are going to be contributing right away next year. And we got to sign some instant impact players in the off season. I just don't know how likely that is with, you know, because there's certain circumstances around the team. Yeah. I just, I, I struggle to trust Belichick to be here with that level of draft cap draft capital and spending that level of cap space. I mean, second most projected in the NFL right behind the bears, I believe with like 80, 90 million. He just had like 70 million a few years ago. And the only guy he hit on was Matt Judon. Everybody else was just mediocre or a bad signing. It Juju Smith Schuster this year, awful signing. Like I just, there's been so many swings and misses recently in the draft and in free agency. I just don't trust it anymore. And if Matt grows the one making the decisions too, if it's kind of a joint effort, get rid of him too. start fresh. We need new, fresh faces and ideas in this front office and having a top, hopefully 
top three, but probably maybe top five to seven pick and all that money and cap space. There's some big decisions to be made and there's a big opportunity here for somebody to come in and make some real change in this organization. So that's, that's what I'm hoping for. Um, I mean, obviously I'd like to see us end up with the highest draft pick possible while also seeing some of our young players succeed and show some promise towards the end of the year. I don't want to watch us score zero points a game. I want to see us compete a little bit, but at the end of the day, if you're focused on the future, getting a high draft pick, hopefully getting a top three pick and being able to take one of those two quarterbacks or even Marvin Harrison Jr. guy like that, who's just uber talented. We need talented players. This team is lackluster in the talent department. So um, I'd say that's that's definitely a big concern. And then you really got to start focusing on the future of this team and and who's going to be running it. Because if, if they think Bill's going to be this next guy, I'm worried that we're going to waste an uh, opportunity to draft a general, generational quarterback who could be the franchise for the next 20 years, along with a lot of talent um, available, whether that's free agency or making trades and using that cap space. There's opportunities that they're going to be able to have this offseason to do some creative and some some exciting things. And I just I don't trust Bill to handle that well with how he's handled things recently in the past. Yeah, I, I really don't. And there's also rumors around Bill Belichick. So um, I'm sure we'll come out in the next coming weeks of um, Bill Belichick um, trade ideas. I know that sounds kind of crazy, but there's been a lot of rumors that Bill is not going to be in New England the upcoming year so make sure you guys are on the lookout for that we'll talk about draft stuff a little earlier than usual just because we're most likely out of the playoffs and once we get a little more uh you know a couple more weeks under our belt we'll know at least the range for sure like if we're starting to win a couple games we'll be like, hey, maybe we're five six or seven you know if we go zero and two or zero and three out of the bye week we'll be like hey this is a legit top three pick so We'll get into a little draft talk a little bit earlier. I know it's not what everyone wanted, but um, we'll get into that. We'll talk about dream scenarios for head coaches. If B Bill were to leave, dream scenarios for quarterbacks um, to be on this team. So make sure you guys are liked, subscribed, um, so that you guys know when we post those videos. We're going to um, be pumping out content you know, left and right and stuff. And then, again, make sure you guys sign up for Underdog. Use code PATSDRIVE or click the link in our bio. Your first deposit up to $100 is matched. It's a great time. They're running promos left and right. They're doing um, specials where you can throw in certain players and all they have to do is get more than half a yard. Um, and then you make your parlay around that and stuff. So guaranteed um, picks and, you know, then it makes it just that much easier to uh, 20 times your money if that's what you choose. So use our code, support the channel. Um, we really appreciate that. Um, and then like, subscribe um, and comment on this video. Let us know your thoughts. And we will know a quarterback here soon for the Patriots. Have a good Thanksgiving. Hopefully you guys enjoy it. Um, and we will talk to you next time.